Hello guys, Captain Alex Mason here, and today I'm going, er, now I'm going to read to you guys the fifth story, which is the second to last one of Modern Warfare 2 Ghost. Now I just, um, figured out how to actually pronounce that stinking school name, and it's called, base, okay, so now this one is called Dead Won't Rise, wait, hang on, okay, basic school Lizzie Chansk. Ukraine. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm trying to make it better for you. Oh, there we go. Alright. So what was Riley going to do? The BBC called him the most dangerous man in Britain. His family was dead. His commander was dead. He didn't know how deep the conspiracy went or who to trust. And then two bastards that killed his loved ones were holed up at RAF Bonington which is a joint American and British airbase. Why the hell are you telling this to a bunch of kids? This is a classified area and you're just going to be like, hell, I'll just say it. Whatever. It's none too easy a place to get inside. They've got a triple... Again, why are you telling them about their defenses? A triple barbed wire perimeter fence, 24-hour satellite search. The soldiers are taking up positions. Prepare yourselves, comrades. In the quarter hour, we will have we will have to prove to them that we are patriots. Right. Well, yeah. The two right bastards were holed up in the airbase, thinking they were as safe as babes, thinking Riley was dead. On that account, they were right. All it all that time. All that he was, everything he held dear was gone. There weren't no Riley anymore, just a dead man. A dead man with a mission. He paints his face black like a ghost, hence his nickname. Alright, Bonnington, south of Ashford. And we got either a deuce and a half or some Russian truck, I don't know. My friend would know. We got a Humvee second there. I don't know what that third vehicle is. He's just laying in the middle of the road in black. And gets ready to get underneath it. And now he's over at the checkpoint where they actually have to check underneath. And that's when he just gets up because he's a badass. They're looking under. They said, oh, he's good to go. Let's go. And he parks. We zoom in and we see either the British soldier is either dead, which I don't think so. I think he's just knocked out, but he's bleeding. And gets out of the car, or out of the truck, and goes for admin. The admin building, searching up the data fa database to figure out where those men are. Um, and it says here on the computer monitor, Barracks 12, Sparks Kevin, Captain 7 S F G A. Washington, Marcus E., Lieutenant 7S, FGA, Baker, Howard, Sergeant, 7S, FGA, Sparks. Huh? Well, time for your pill. Shh, boy. Your orders have changed, Captain Sparks. You're shipping out early. A dangerous missin mission just for one. Yeah, so he killed Washington first. I don't know why he's crying though. Like, I don't. Like, he killed him without him knowing. So, now basically what he did was he kidnapped Kevin Sparks and is now driving out with a Jeep. A Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> Manchester, two hours later. I think this is. Yeah, this is Riley's um, family home. My mother! My brother, his beautiful wife, wonderful girl she was. She saved him, you know. Kept him off the drugs. Gave him a son, Jacob. Just a great little kid. The worst part of it is that I can't feel the proper things. I can't grieve, Sparks. I can only do the things that need doing. And you, Sparks, you know what you need. You need to be... You need to be hooked up on a morphine drip. Yeah, this, this it kind of messed up what he does next. 
you need to be vis vis visecrated serrated or whatever that means you need your in you need your entrails to come out on your on the floor and spell out the word spell out your confession i think it means spill out you need to read it over and over as the morphine wears off and the pain comes in which you feel what i should be feeling but can't and you need to die from it Wh why me I, I didn't kill them it was washington and he would say it was roba it's all the same Oof. maybe you're all brainwashed it really doesn't matter I, I could help you give you names you have no idea how high up this goes ah see but if you but if you're brainwashed you can kill children you can't really be trustworthy can you I'll just get them from Roba. Good news for you. Oh, he was about ready to bang him, hit him with that. And then he pulls out his browning HP, I think. What you need and what I need are two different things. Ooh, damn. So he put him out of his misery and killed him. So he shot the fucker right in the mouth. Switched their tags, then struck the match on everything that ever mattered to him. You've heard tell about the cleansing fire. Well, this weren't that. This was a funeral fire, or a funeral prior. If I'm even pronouncing that right. I know what it means. Is I just don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, because I've already heard of pyromaniac, which means you like to set things on fire. But anyway. Um, and that wasn't the end of Lieutenant Simon Riley. What was left was just a ghost. Beep, 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 beep. Next morning. Oh, this is another. This is a new character. Um, I'll get to like talking about him soon. Lieutenant Washington was discovered at Reve Revale, I think. Captain Sparks' knife was found in the trash behind Barracks Four. Captain Sparks is missing. I'll call CID. No. No one leaves the barracks, this barracks, until it's time to go to the airfield. Sir? These boys are shipping out in less than two hours. You, Sergeant Kirsch, will stay here and see to it that they get on their plane. I'm going to go look at some security footage. That's Colonel Marshall, by the way. He's also tied into this shit. I don't know how, but I know he is. But it doesn't say he was brainwashed, so... Maybe he's working with Major Vernon. Anyway, Boys Town, Cahulia, Guilla, Mexico, two months later. Which means, I think we're in February. Yeah, February of 2011. 19th, I think. Woo! Man, we fucking own this town. Hey, honey, how does it feel to have your sweet puta ass belong to some real men now? <laughs> no more fat. El Gordo sends his best wishes, assholes. Yeah, that's um, what's his face? Gilberto saying that he's the middle one, and Gilberto is the second in command of the Zagoza cartel and his favorite weapon is the mini Uzi which is what he's holding he was seen in some of the stories before I think I mentioned it already tell Robo to go fuck himself Gah. thump respect your elders pendejo I don't know what that means but I know it's offensive I can't believe how quickly the cockroaches move in. The cockroach cannot learn, my friend. They just have to be exterminated. So the first one who talked, the one about how quickly they move in was Gilberto. And now he's speaking again. The Americans fill their heads with big dreams, give them guns, and they think we'll send a big message to Mr. Roba. We give them a big message soon enough, eh? You, finish this. I'm going to have a drink. He's saying this all in... Spanish, by the way. 
like every language, everything they've said so far was in Spanish. Tequila, the worst you got. Right away, that's Riley talking in Spanish. We have the worst in Mexico. <laughs> I like your style. What's your name, my friend? Puta madre! My name to you is Death. <laughs> Six weeks I've been waiting for you. He blacks out. He ends up in a prison cell. Alright. You've got a lot of chaos. Not everyone is happy. Be with Senor Roba's plans. The cartels are at war. The local Colos, I think that's how you pronounce it, are piling up like cordwood. Where it is, El Gordo has flown the coop. You know where. Ah, e. You are dead. You are dead. We're all dead men, Vernon. Sparks, Washington, Riley, everyone you tried to brainwash. Roba's plan is a failure. Ha ha ha. You're a funny. You are funny, dead Englishman. Everything goes exactly how El Gordo what wants. Which is what? I thought the dead know all. You not so dead, maybe. Ha 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 What the dead know? What the dead don't know, we can learn. I remember room number two was entirely blacked out with a blinking red light in the ceiling. Yeah, this is in the interrogation room, but he does something worse. He sends him in a nice tropical room, turns on some music, messes the guy so fuck up. Meant to drive a mad. I'm drive a man mad, I'm guessing. Lucky for you, we don't have time for that. So we move right here to stage three. Here is where you tell me where Roba is. Fuck you, English. Now he's speaking in English. I think he was... Yeah, he was speaking English before, like, in the prison cell. It's like Vernon once told me. There isn't a man alive that doesn't have a breaking point. Your mistake with me was that I'd already reached mine a long time ago. I was already broken, mate. Though you might call me more of a high-functioning wreck. Half of me's been dead more than 20 years. Now that I'm all dead, though, like, I'm feeling much better. So this is the fancy suite, eh? Did I make it this far? I don't remember. Pleasant surroundings, pleasant lights, pleasant visual aids. Hello, highway. Hello, highway. So what's going on? And now he's got three different needles. I don't know what's in them, but it's an interrogation method. Was this what Sparks was trying to get back to? I guess it seems better with some of these psychedelics, or if I'm even pronouncing that right, opiates, temazapam, benazilate. Benazilite? I don't know. I'm not good with drugs. Stay off of drugs, kids, by the way. Why go through all this Doctor Who business? An awful lot of trouble for something. It's too big for you, English. Or for you, dead English. I will tell you nothing of El Gordo's plan. All I need you to tell me is where he's moved. Beyond that, I prefer to get my information straight from the horse's mouth. Hmm. I suppose your brain hasn't been properly properly prepared for this stage. And by that he means he had, he doesn't know what kind of torture methods he's going to use on this bitch. Um, basically, you can't see it, but I'm pretty sure you can see it on the wiki page. Gilberto gets three needles shoved right into his face. The middle one piercing his cent the center of his eye. The other two hitting just below his eyebrow and the other like inside his embedded in his cheek and he's screaming about it so we'll just wing it <laughs> ah! and now we're looking at Colonel or is it Colonel Marshall no Colonel Barber I'm sorry I don't know why I said Colonel Marshall so Colonel Barber's desk is filled with all this pictures of Riley and all this stuff SAS officer kills seven, takes own life. What? Uh, ends in suicide. Defense ministry blamed for slaying. Blah, 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 blah. Olson. Colonel Barber. At Bonington. Yeah. I've gone over everything. CID can put this to bed. And he's looking at the security monitors of Ghost. Sparks and Washington had a dispute over a girl. Of all things. 
No, no direct connection with the Riley business. Seems they all cracked a little down in Mexico. So, Simon Riley, you're my, you're good, my friend. Even taught this old dog a couple of new ones. But you're dead now, officially dead. And there isn't a soul alive who gives a shit. And that means your ass is my... What the fuck does that even mean? Like, I don't... I still am puzzled by that. I don't know what he meant by that. And they don't really... Ex I kind of wish they would do more stories like this. Like, the Call of Duty franchise. Because I've read the two books. Um, Devil's Breath, which is about how Gabriel Rourke in Call of Duty Ghost finally broke. And then The Rightful King, which is talking about the reason why... Um, Raul Menendez and his family started a drug cartel in Nicaragua and so on and so forth. But this is also talking about how he became Ghost and how he got the name Ghost. But they still don't tell us what happened after that. I wish they would. I wish they would tell us. Like there's so many conflicting parts in this story. Like the next parts of this book take place in 2011. You know, in the flashbacks of him telling the story. I don't know exactly when the whole Lissy Shanks, or I pronounced it right before, but the school hostage situation took place. I still don't know when that takes place, but, like, when he's telling the story, everything comes up to the year 2011 in early February. February. And this is, and what's puzzling about it, what's conflicting about it, is that Task Force 1 for 1 didn't really start, like, establish itself until, like, either be in between, um, 2011 and 2016, like, after 2011, like, I, I don't know, it, it's confusing, but, um, you know what, I'm gonna end this video, and I'm just gonna finish the story up, so, before I go, I'm just gonna bring up this thing, so, we got the final picture of Ghost, who's riding on an M1A2 Abrams, there's two actually right there, and three UH-60 Blackhawks flying above him, still carrying his M4, but now nah, this kind of kind of dis depresses me a little bit. Smoking. Now I know everybody's like, "Hey, it makes the characters look badass." Well, even if it makes them look badass, it's still a ha health hazard. In fact, my grandfather, he was a he was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. He smoked. Guess what killed him? Smoking. Of course, it didn't really affect him until later on in his life, but, you know, smoking does kill everybody. And then, I want to just remind you guys of everything, because I was, um, or my area that I live in had a recent issue with a manhunt um, a few days ago. Or, Monday, actually. It was Monday. Um... I just want to remind you people, guns don't kill people. It's the people who are responsible for that gun that kill the people. Like, say, and yes, a lot of people will say, well, then how do you explain, like, say something, like, knocks a gun over and the gun goes off and kills somebody. It's still technically the person that killed him because he was irresponsible and didn't unload his weapon or cleaned it properly. Because, you know, you've got to constantly do that so you don't hurt somebody. Now, guns aren't... I'm not saying guns aren't dangerous. I'm just saying guns don't necessarily kill the people. Because when you think about it, you can use that gun to kill per people, but they aren't really the ones killing the people. For instance, if I was uh, holding a gun, a guy was running away, and he was an escaped convict or anything like that, I could either choose to shoot to kill or shoot to wound. In this case, I would mostly shoot to wound, like shoot in the leg and then get him some immediate medical attention so he doesn't die from bleeding out. But I just want to tell you guys that guns don't necessarily kill people, and whoever says that is stupid. Because that's not true. They're dangerous, yes. But they don't necessarily kill people. They, If you use it to kill, then you're the one killing them. I just want to clarify that. But anyway, so I'm going to just end this before I ramble too much and then I'll just upload or upload the final story to Modern Warfare 2 Ghost 
And then that'll be the next Call of Duty topic that I actually finished, um, surprisingly. Like, either discussing about or actually reading the full thing. So, yeah. Captain Alex Mason, and I'll see you guys in the next video.